Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 117. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, which wert and art and evermore shall be. Hymn number 117. scriptural will be given by Susan from Massachusetts. Job. Behold, God exalteth by his power, who teacheth like him. Remember that thou magnify his work, which men behold. Every man may see it, man may behold it afar off. Behold, God is great. And we know him not, neither can the number of his years be searched out. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he, which we cannot comprehend. For he saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth. Likewise to the small rain, and to the great rain of his strength. He sealeth up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. Then the beasts go into dens, 
and remain in their places. Touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power and in judgment and in plenty of justice. He will not afflict. Revelation Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Let's, <clears throat> let's now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven, our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name, adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for for God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 310. Sing, ye joyous children, sing. Glorious is the Christ our King. Truth has come again to earth through the lowly Savior's birth. Men and angels anthems raise, hymns of joy and shouts of praise. Hear the angelic song again, peace on earth, goodwill to men. Sing, ye joyous children, sing, glorious is the Christ our King. Hymn number 310.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin every Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion, which is really good instruction on how to live Christian science. We had a really good one this morning, too. So if you missed it, or if you'd like to hear it again, you can find it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. And you can also find it on our YouTube channel. We have a Sunday school for children that meets every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. And that Sunday school is available for children anywhere. It has its own teleconference number so that any child anywhere in the world can call in and join the Sunday School. In fact, many of our Sunday School students do just that. So if you have a child of Sunday School age and don't live in the area, call us, we'll give you the number, and we would love to welcome your child to our Sunday School. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15 where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And for all of our services, we have a nursery for infants and toddlers. A reminder that this week will be Christmas, and Friday being Christmas Eve, we will have our annual Christmas Eve service Friday evening, December 24, at 8 p.m. There will be fine music, fine readings, candlelight, and a lot of Christmas cheer. And afterwards, we'll even have goodies to eat. Our next Bible study will be in January, so check our website for the date and for the study questions. And uh, we look forward to everyone joining us uh, in January for another Bible study. A uh, reminder that our desktop calendar for 2022 is still available for purchase. It's not too late. Price is $15 for the first and $12 for each additional mailed to the same address at the same time. And we've been busy printing the... Forum Highlights issue number 200 was printed and mailed this week to subscribers, so look for it in your mailbox. Our website contains um, a, a large number of articles, videos, music, recordings, all the best of Christian science literature. And one of the finest uh, articles that is referred to now on our, being, being featured, excuse me, on our website, is excerpt from an article written by Martha Wilcox entitled Mary. A wonderful explanation of what Mary was all about and her state of thought that was receptive to God's bringing us his son, Christ Jesus, through her. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And a special welcome to Justin and Leah for visiting from California. Now we will have the reading of a testimony from miscellaneous writings which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Karen from California. Page 442. Until about one year ago, I had no thought of investigating Christian Science. Previous to that time, it had been presented to me in such a way that I condemned it as unreasonable and absurd. 
at that time, it was presented to be in a more reasonable light. I determined to divest myself of prejudice as far as was possible and investigate it, thinking that if there was anything in it, it was for me as well as others, that I surely needed it. And if I found no good in it, I could then, with some show of reason, condemn it. I had been reading Science and Health about two weeks when one morning I wanted my cane. It had been misplaced. And while looking for it, the thought came to me, if all is mine, I need no cane. I went out without it, have not used it at all since, and do not need it as a support. But for a time, I did miss it from my hand. I had used it for years as a support to a very lame back. I before went much stooped because it pained me to straighten up. But from the time I laid my cane aside, I straightened up free from pain. Occasionally, I have a slight pain in my back, but it is nothing to compare with what it had been. In a short time after laying my cane aside, my pipe and tobacco went out into the street, and I have not, re and it has not returned. I had smoked for 65 years and chewed for 50. I have no desire for either of them. In fact, the smoke is offensive to me. Many times before, I had tried to quit, but the desire for it was so strong that I would go back to it. And when I tried to taper off, I would make the taper end the longest. Many other physical claims have disappeared, and it is a common thing for acquaintances to say when they meet me, you look better than I have seen you for years. What have you been doing? My reply is, I not only look better, but feel better and am better, and Christian science has done it. With all this, I seem to have very little spiritual understanding of the truth, am endeavoring to get more, but it seems slow. If there is a shorter road to it than I have found, I should like to be directed to it. J. S. M. Joplin, Missouri. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 26 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, is the universe, including man, evolved by atomic force? The golden text is from Psalms. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. The responsive reading is from Job. Ask now the beasts, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee, or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this, which shaketh the earth out of her place? which commandeth the sun, and it riseth not, and sealeth up the stars, which alone spreadeth out the heavens, and treadeth upon the waves of the sea, which maketh Arcturus, Orion, and Pleiades, and the chambers of the south, which doeth great things past finding out, yea, and wonders 
without numbers. Fairly from Maryland will now read. The Holy Bible. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Genesis. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down. Thou sendest forth thy spirits, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. Second Kings. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me? And Isaiah said, This sign shalt thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he hath spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees, or go back ten degrees? And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down ten degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backward ten degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward, by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. Job, is not God in the height of heaven? Joshua, now it came to pass, when Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it, as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, that they feared greatly. Wherefore Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent unto Hoham, king of Hebron, and unto Piram, king of Jarmuth, and to Japhiah, king of Lachish, and to Deber, king of Eglon, saying, Come up unto me and help me, that we may smite Gibeon, for he hath made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp to Gilgal, saying, Slack not thy hand from thy servants. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. 
Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord discomfited them before Israel. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Bethoran, that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah, and they died. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, since stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. And there was no day like that before it or after it. Psalms. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Job. He stretcheth out the north over the empty place, and hangeth the earth upon nothing. He bindeth up the waters in his thick clouds, and the cloud is not rent under them. He holdeth back the face of his throne, and spreadeth his cloud upon it. He hath compassed the water with bounds, until the day and night come to an end. The pillars of heaven tremble, and are astonished at his reproof. He divideth the sea with his power, and by his understanding he smiteth through the proud. By his spirit he hath garnished the heavens. The thunder of his power, who can understand? Revelation. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will read correlative passages from the Christian Science Textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. Spiritual evolution alone is worthy of the exercise of divine power. Divine metaphysics, as revealed to spiritual understanding, shows clearly that all is mind, and that mind is God, omnipotence, omnipresence, omniscience, that is, all power, all presence, all science. Material evolution implies that the great first cause must become material, and afterwards must either return to mind or go down into dust and nothingness. Searching for the origin of man, who is the reflection of God, is like inquiring into the origin of God, the self-existent and eternal. Only impotent error would seek to unite spirit with matter, good with evil, immortality with mortality, and call this sham unity man, as if man were the offspring of both mind and matter, of both deity and humanity. Creation rests on a spiritual basis. Material knowledge usurped the throne of the creative divine principle insisted on the might of matter, the force of falsity, the insignificance of spirit, and proclaimed an anthropomorphic God. 
the material senses and human conceptions would translate spiritual ideas into material beliefs and would say that an anthropomorphic God, instead of divine principle, in other words, divine love, is the father of the rain, who hath begotten the drops of dew, who bringeth forth Maseroth in his season, and guideth Arcturus with his sons. Physical science, so called, is human knowledge, a law of mortal mind, a blind belief, a Samson shorn of his strength. When this human belief lacks organizations to support it, its foundations are gone, having neither moral might, spiritual basis, nor holy principle of its own, this belief mistakes effect for cause and seeks to find life and intelligence in matter. The universe, like man, is to be interpreted by science from its divine principle, God, and then it can be understood. But when explained on the basis of physical sense and represented as subject to growth, maturity, and decay, the universe, like man, is and must continue to be an enigma. Adhesion, cohesion, and attraction are properties of mind. They belong to divine principle and support the equipoise of that thought force which launched the earth in its orbit and said to the proud wave, thus far and no farther. We tread on forces, withdraw them, and creation must collapse. Human knowledge calls them forces of matter. But divine science declares that they belong wholly to divine mind, are inherent in this mind, and so restores them to their rightful home and classification. Erring power is a material belief, a blind, miscalled force, the offspring of will and not of wisdom, of the mortal mind and not of the immortal. It is the headlong cataract, the devouring flame, the tempest's breath. It is lightning and hurricane, all that is selfish, wicked, dishonest, and impure. Moral and spiritual might belong to spirit, who holds the wind in his fists, and this teaching accords with science and harmony. In science, you can have no power opposed to God, and the physical senses must give up their false testimony. The false evidence of material sense contrasts strikingly with the testimony of spirit. Material sense lifts its voice with the arrogance of reality and says, The world is my kingdom. I am enthroned in the gorgeousness of matter. But a touch, an accident, the law of God may at any moment annihilate my peace, for all my fancied joys are fatal. Like bursting lava, I expand but to my own despair and shine with the resplendency of consuming fire. Spirit, bearing opposite testimony, saith, 
I am spirit. Man whose senses are spiritual is my likeness. He reflects the infinite understanding, for I am infinity. The beauty of holiness, the perfection of being, imperishable glory, all are mine, for I am God. I give immortality to man, for I am truth. I include and impart all bliss, for I am love. I give life without beginning and without end, for I am life. I am supreme and give all, for I am mind. I am the substance of all, because I am that I am. Could spirit evolve its opposite, matter, and give matter ability to sin and suffer? Is spirit God injected into dust and eventually ejected at the demand of matter? Does spirit enter dust and lose therein the divine nature and omnipotence? Does mind God enter matter to become there a mortal sinner, animated by the breath of God? The point for each one to decide is whether it is mortal mind or immortal mind that is causative. We should forsake the basis of matter for metaphysical science and its divine principle. Undisturbed amid the jarring testimony of the material senses, science, still enthroned, is unfolding to mortals the immutable, harmonious, divine principle, is unfolding life and the universe, ever-present and eternal. Unfathomable mind is expressed. The depth, breadth, height, might, majesty, and glory of infinite love fill all space. That is enough. Here is the emphatic declaration that God creates all through mind, not through matter. God is infinite, therefore ever-present, and there is no other power nor presence. Hence, the spirituality of the universe is the only fact of creation. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer for our world.
Let us now sing hymn number 362. To us a child of hope is born, to us a son is given. Him shall the tribes of earth obey, and all the hosts of heaven, and all the hosts of heaven. Hymn number 362. Oh 
Let's now sing hymn number 222. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Hymn number 222. Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the Corrals of Passages from 1 John, 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind, and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth, matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal, matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. 1 John. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him 
purifieth himself, even as he is pure. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm.